Hi, welcome to Joy Fido International. How are you today? I hope you're doing really great. I am really excited to be chatting with you today. My name is Joy Fido and welcome on board. Okay, so let's really get on with it today. What 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 is the discussion about today? This is the part of our Joy Fido International where we love to call the Joy Fido Africa. Now, you know I'm African and you know I love everything African. So you can see from the outfit I'm wearing today that I am actually showing off in my African fabric and fashion, my African fashion line called um, African Queen. So today it's all about my, my experience from Nigeria. I was away for about a month. And as usual, whenever I come back, I like to chat with you and share my experiences with you. So today is going to be one of those days where I really tell you what I experienced and the things I saw and what is possible and what is happening on ground and what we need to do to change what we are having at the moment. Now, most times I like to chat with what I call the Africans in diaspora or the Nigerians in diaspora. Why, why diaspora? Because we are the ones who left home and have been abroad for so long and then things start to happen to us. Things start to happen in the sense of we get so much information filtering across to us and then we take them as holy grail. Holy grail in the sense of everything is so bad, nothing is working, it is so sad, please can you run as far away as you can. Just don't go back there. And so that's the kind of negative message you hear all the time. And you'll find that I have quite a few books around me which I'm going to be referring to for interesting discussion. And so it's going to be quite an intensive and exciting chat with you today. And I'm hoping that by the time we're done, I'll be able to, as usual, inspire you because that's what Jeffrey the International is all about, inspiring you to success, inspire you to start having a change of heart and see what you can do to make a change in this world. So the, the title of our discussion today is gonna be Nigerians wake up, let us help ourselves. That's, that's the big message here today. Let us wake up to help ourselves. And I'm gonna read something interesting from uh, one of the quotes Martin Luther King um, gave us during his time on this earth, he says, the ultimate tragedy is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence over that by the good people. So why have I brought this quote in? It's really something interesting that came to my knowledge recently. Um, you know WhatsApp, the app that we send videos and we make calls and we send messages to each other. And I, I received this video that was really, really touching. It's about this state governor in Nigeria called Frank Ibori. And this man is the governor of Delta State, I believe. In this video, it was a, a BBC um, documentary about the corruption that goes on in Africa. And the worst part is Nigeria in particular. Now, if you follow me on Facebook and follow the messages I send out, I am always out there to give Africa the best name there is. It's all about branding, apparently. And I'll show you some books that I've been reading about what's going on. So we need to brand our continent beautifully. Because if you don't do it, no one's going to do it for you. And it's interesting, especially those of us in the diaspora, that we are so eager to run away from where we come from. We, we don't really see anything good in it. But today I'm going to try and make you see a different side to this story. So I love everything Africa. I love our food. I love our fashion. I love our music. And I just love the continent that is Africa because there's so much going for us. But now this is where the problem comes in. We have individuals that all they want to do is destroy that which God has given to us. And from that quote of Martin Luther King, it, it just says, 
refusal for those of us who can see what is bad to even say anything it's counted as complicity it's counted as if you are participating it's counted as if you are encouraging and this is where the message comes up where i'm saying we should wake up we cannot continue to sit idly and watch while a few people continue to destroy that which is supposed to be our own africa is our continent we may say we run away we may say we live in other parts of the world which is okay migration people travel people visit places but how do you abandon yours and allow somebody else to take over and chase you out of town that's that's what it's sounding like to me because this man ibori they call him and so many more which as a nigerian we are all aware of how bad these leaders supposed leaders destroy our continent and our country and must unto himself in this documentary three billion dollars three billion dollars and then in that program someone saying one of the people who was trying to investigate him he tried to bribe this man with 15 million dollars cash i'm not saying nara i'm saying cash in dollars and then you don't want to count the rest what, what gives him that right to do that? We always have to remind ourselves that we are all human. And they, in the program, they went, they traced his story to when he was working here in London and he was a Mr. Nobody. He was into all kinds of shady deals, credit card fraud, and you name them. And then he had access to money and money that belongs to the people. And suddenly he takes it all away and you could... You could not count the houses he owns in the UK, in the US, and every, everywhere else in the Western world. Now, how do you create a decent country from people like this? That's, that's the question I want to ask those of us in the diaspora. How much longer are we going to keep running away? What about the children we have now? Where are they going to eventually go home? I mean, I've spoken to people who say, yeah, I don't really care. Um, I born my, I gave back to my children abroad. So, no, no, no. I have lived here in the UK for the past 24 years. And I can tell you, it can never really dip down in you, be home. Because if it's not where you were really born into, and with all the history that goes with it, you all see what is going on right now in the world. Trump in the US and Brexit and you name it. You cannot call anybody else's home your home. So I'll give another quote from the same Martin Luther King. I kind of like how he, he saw so many things and he did not just sit there and watch. He acted upon it. Another thing we need to constantly remind ourselves is any one person can change the world. It starts with one person. And if all of us keep sitting back and leaving it to somebody else to take over and take responsibility and do it, this is what will continue to happen to us. The, you know, the other quote was, there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but he must take it because his conscience tells him it is right. Another one says, a man who won't die for something is not fit to live. Another one says, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. We begin to die when we start to become silent about things that really matter. And so when I saw this video, something in me just snapped. I've seen so many videos recently that really, really, really get to me. There's another one I saw about the same time, and it's about these young children being trafficked. Uh, 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 traffic, I don't know what you call this. Trafficked across the globe. They're being trafficked from Africa, Nigeria in particular. These are young children, 12 year olds. Now, if you have children, you can feel what I'm feeling right now. I have children. A 12 year old being carried across the world, and what is the reason? It's another form of slavery. But you may just think, okay, they're being sent to other parts of the world to become slaves or maybe to become house helps and helping a home and maybe, oh, you know, 
the way we are grown, grow, you know, brought up in Africa, occasionally they will smack the child, they will beat the child up, they will do things. Okay, a typical African would say, but that's how we were brought up, and so big deal. You grow out of it, you become your own person eventually. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about children being trafficked for prostitution. If you follow me on Facebook, please go and see these videos. They are really heart wrenching. I've circulated it to as many friends as I know. We need to do something. You begin to die when you keep silent over things that matter. So we're sitting down here in our 50s, in our 40s, in our 30s, and we're seeing things happening to our children, 12 year old, and we're sitting down and we're doing nothing. Because as, as normal and as typical, as fella will say it, the typical African is so scared of everything. And no one die, and no one quench. I have a house, I have children. So the one you have is the special one. And then those ones that have been trafficked across the world for prostitution, that's their lot. They should go and suffer. I don't think it's right. I think we need to stand up and do something about our country and our continent. It is down to us. When you look back in history and you remember people like Gowon leading Nigeria, Gowon was only 30 years old when he took over Nigeria. And now we in our 50s were still sitting and doing nothing. I find it ridiculous. So this is a time for us to wake up and, and talk and speak up. Because if we do, we live in Western world where we know that these things don't happen. Even if you're going to say corruption happens all over the world, it is not in the, in the, at the rate that it happens in Africa. Okay, another quote says, Sam Martin Luther King, he says, Change does not roll in on the wheels of inevit inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. Continuous struggle is all about us speaking up and telling it as it is. And stop pretending that it is okay. Now, this is what really gets to me because I kind of follow some of, you know, I, I see myself on some of these pages on Facebook, people drag me in or whatever they want to do and I, I see the trend of discussion. And you hear people making this big noise about change because obviously change was what, the current government in Nigeria, Buhari, said he wanted to bring into Nigeria. But we forget that change starts with us. Change starts with every human being. I was in Nigeria, and I tell you, as a Nigerian who loves Nigeria so much, when I get to the Nigerian airport, my heart starts to bleed. Bleed in the sense of every human being you come across just wants to take something from you. I have to find them most times when I want to because these same people, I mean, I love my people. We travel the world. Nigerians will travel to wherever there is air to breathe. You name it, a Nigerian is there. So we do travel. We're not timid people who sit back and wait for things to come to us. We do go out. So we go to various parts of the world. We see various airports and we know what it's like to, to be in an airport. I am dreaming of going into tourism business because I love tra uh, traveling. I, I travel to as many places I can think of. Anywhere I dream of and I feel like visiting, I want to see what that country is about. Because traveling is a form of education. And so you, you can tell from someone who travels and someone who doesn't travel. Because the ignorant person, usually most times because they haven't seen anywhere else all they've seen is the confines of where they live and so when they're talking you can just get it from them and so if we love traveling why can we not embrace other people to visit us as well why can we not encourage other people to come to our country but the present state of our airport at the moment is such a, a sad state that you cannot encourage anybody to come and visit because if everybody you come across wants to take money from you, what are they getting paid for? I know that's another story where we start wondering how much they are being paid. But at least you're doing a job, you're being paid, do the job. Now you, you'll be, you, they, they'll pull your bag apart, not because they're looking for anything in particular, but because they just want to get money off you. 
And so now we preach in and you see these Facebook pages and they go, but it's Buhari who has not changed. And I had to, I had to quarrel with that one time. I visited Nigeria last year and there was an, we had a, an issue with, with uh, potato, um, not potatoes, uh, tomatoes. And there was scarcity of tomatoes for whatever reason, the weather or something may have happened and it became really scarce for the period it was. And guess what? Everybody blamed Buhari for uh, tomatoes not being in the market. And then I visit this year and there's tomatoes everywhere. Excess. Typical our scenario. When we have, we have. And the amount of tomatoes, if you go on my Facebook again, you see I'll send the pictures there. Volume of tomatoes were 200 naira. That's less than 20p. And I'm not seeing anybody thanking Buhari because now we have tomatoes. Do you see what I'm, what, what I'm saying and where I'm coming from? When things go wrong, it is down to us individuals. We need to make that change if we want to change our country. And it starts from simple things like what I'm doing with you now. Chatting with you about the realities of our country. We need to start changing from every one of us. And if we see people like Ibohri, um, uh, there was a Lamiesiga who somehow had happened to be a classmate of mine years ago when I was in university, you would never have imagined that people, when they find themselves in positions of power, will completely abuse it. Because that's what they call abuse of power. You are in a position where you have access to money that belongs to the state, belongs to the people. And what do you do? You just take it all away and put it in your personal account. And you go around the world and you buy houses. And then you leave the country in abject poverty. And then what happens? Those of us who can have access to buying, you know, a ticket and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 flying away, then we all fly away and we leave the country in total disrepair. And I remember, I think I did, when I posted that picture on this produce, so much excess of it. And I'm saying, wow, look at how rich our country is. There's so much you can do with these things. And somebody said, yeah, it's okay for you who live abroad to come over with your, with your pounds and then buy these tomatoes and then you think. But that wasn't the point. The point was we have so much now. We can turn it around. We can do things with it. We can package it. We can put it in containers. I mean, I live in the UK and seriously, we don't have that many farms here. But somehow we have food every month of the year. My question is, where is it coming from? And then imagine Nigeria with all that food. Why are we, why are we not thinking? So this is where I want us to come in. It's, it's these corrupt people, we need to tell them when they have gone wrong. I, they're human beings. And what their issue is, is extreme greed. So you have access to where something is, and your way of looking at it is, let me destroy it. Let me finish it. Let there not be a this country again. But then we happen to have 180 million people in that country. So th this is another interesting book. I did say I was going to show you some books. Um, it's called Africa Betrayed. Africa Betrayed, and it's by George Aite. Now, this is a very, very interesting book because he went on to explain in details how corruption has destroyed Africa. And this is just an, you know, a little part I want, to, I want to read about what he said. He said the painful truth is that African governments squandered. This is him speaking in past tense, right? We're talking about this today. It's happening as of today. Squandered, wasted, and consumed many of the loaned funds. So obviously when the con continent started to, individual countries started having their independence and then they were now getting... Um, taking loans from the Western world and trying to rebuild, they took these loans and what did they do? There is, there is little to show for the enormous African debt. So we took all this money, yet we owe so much. He says, true, there was colonial exploitation in the past, which is true, yes, we went through slavery and the Western world exploited us. Um, 
by today the real exploiters and oppressors of the African peasants are often the African elite. It is common knowledge that highly placed African government officials extort um, commissions on foreign loans contracts and deposit them in overseas banks. The very people who are supposed to defend and protect the peasants, the peasants' interests have instead been responsible for the institutionalized looting and capital flight that have plagued the African economy. Africa betrayed. Very interesting book. So, I saw a video as well where this is a young woman, young woman, I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure I'm older than her, apparently the, the daughter of one of the state governors. And I think there was a wedding, maybe family wedding or whatever it was that was going on in that video. And this young lady had bundles and what, what I'll call it bundles, bundles and bundles of dollars in her hands. I know it's a tradition for us, mostly the Yorubas in Nigeria, when somebody is dancing or celebrating or something, you, you, we call it spray money. You take money, you, you show that you appreciate the person and that's your way of showing appreciation. But this was, this was something else. This person was definitely possessed by some evil spirit. Because then she had all these people around her who were just giving her the money in bundles. And, and what she was doing, she would just take the bundle and just fling it in the air. And then this money just sprays all over the place. Now, if you worked hard for this money, would you behave like this to it? Of course not. I work hard day in, day out, trying to make ends meet. I have four children and I have bills upon bills upon bills living in this part of the world because naturally when you visit home you hear people think that because you live abroad you don't have a problem and they look at you like oh yes you brought all that money and I take my time to explain to them that the bill I pay a month for maybe electricity bill or maybe water bill or maybe my rent is more than what they will pay for a whole year's rent and people can begin to relate to that and that's beside the point this woman is taking these words of notes dollars not naira again and flinging in the air to show her wealth wealth from what from from what what did you do to amass such amount of wealth but of course it came out that the father is the governor of a state or your state or I can't remember the state and you are the governor of a state and you find out if you go and look into that state they have not paid teachers for three years they have not paid the police people for years and years and then it is no longer a surprise when you see police people stop people at the checking point and they're saying to you give them money I mean, my sister was telling me a very sad story of a police commissioner or something like that who earns 15,000 Naira a month or something like that. We're talking maybe 15,000, you're talking maybe, uh, maybe, maybe 100 pounds or 150 pounds or something like that. I can't remember top of my head. No, 10,000 is not 100 pounds. But anyway, let's leave the maths for now. But what I know is 15,000 is nothing. And that's what the police commissioner is earning. To feed a family of maybe five or six children and relatives that will come and ask for money because he's a police commissioner. So they assume he has money. But then the state governor's daughter is here in London flinging words of, of dollars. And then the state government is owing this staff their rightful money that they worked for. So is it a wonder then that we're asking for change that is never going to come? Because if it starts from the government not to even show interest in caring for their staff, then the staff will turn around and expect money from everybody that walks past them, and so the whole thing carries on. It is pathetic. And what, what, what I've said in a few other videos, which I think I did a few videos while in Nigeria while I, I try to explain what is going on with us as a race or as a people. It's all in our mind. It starts from our mind. 
and this is what it is we've been programmed to see bad as good hence those Martin Luther King uh, quotes we have been programmed to see bad as good this same Facebook pages I'm on you see people there, there was another video that went around and this is in River State where I come from and this state governor I think it was 15 million naira cash because it's in the video cash there was election going on and his way of winning the election was to bring all this money out to give to bribe the um, um, the officials so that they will say he won the election maybe he hasn't won but he has won already because he's given them money and the same, same states people are struggling and suffering and so we carry on this way and continue to destroy our country to the point now that everybody is desperate to run away where you then see these 12 year olds being put into boats there's a program even as at this night that is going to be you know shown on on sky tv you probably see it much later and it's talking about this same dangerous trip that young children have been put through because everyone wants to run away in a land that has so much it just hurts I mean, this is something interesting I read. Um, this is called the Africa Report. And I bought this on my way to Nigeria. It was very interesting because, again, typical me, I just want to know what's going on with Africa. And I want to know how all of us can put our hands together and help. And this particular article was from a man called El Nathan John. Africa Report. Uh, let me see if I can. It was January 2017. And the, the, the particular um, article says how to be a good African. This is an interesting one. It says, who will you be helping when you decide to abandon your country? What value will you be adding to Europe or America? Why would you see a politically and economically stable country and just decide you want to move there? He says, a good African does not allow the things of this world to determine their choices in life. Well, yes, if we're good Africans. But he made a very clear point. We are running away from our Africa, from our Nigeria, from our individual countries, and we are running to the West. But a big question he asked really touched me. He says, why are we running to a politically and economically stable countries. Why? This is Europe. Everything has been set. And this is why, for those of us who are here, we find it so hard to get in. Get in in the sense of, what can we contribute that can make a difference? The man asked. No, there's nothing again that you can come and do that is not there already. I mean, I have friends back in Nigeria, you know, my tailors, and they say to me, oh, please, we would like to come over, and I say, what would you come and be doing there? Oh, but I could come and, and do hair. I could come and, and sew clothes. But in Europe, you barely do that. In Europe, um, shops are, all the clothes are ready made. And where do they come from? Mostly Bangladeshi, mostly India, mostly China. So you walk into a shop, it's all done. And so, yes. You see us, we say, yeah, I want to come and do this, want to come and do that. And then we end up coming here to clean. I mean, the generality of us here are cleaning and doing what they call menial jobs because, like the man rightly said, what do you want to come and contribute to a system that's already set up? And that's when you start hearing us complaining about racism and, you know, they didn't treat me well and I went for that interview and I didn't win or I didn't, I didn't get the job and then, um, then they promoted their own, they didn't promote me, but I do all the hard work. Excuse me? We do have a country. We do have a country that needs our attention. We have a country that is desperate for knowledge, for information, for skills. But now we've allowed these people who have stolen everything from us to steal and walk away and then we, 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 we practically embrace them. We heal them. We, 
we make them look like they're, they're the best things that happen. And this is what I'm seeing on these Facebook pages. You say the one who's saying that what is going on is wrong. And you say the ones who say, oh, yeah, you're talking about this one. What about that other one? Why didn't you mention when this one was doing that? And doing... and so we sit there and we, 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 we celebrate them. Like this case of this real estate government, you can see all the money there. And then there were people still claiming that, no, these people, this money that was there was being planted by other people. I don't get it. It is your wealth they are stealing. It is your money they are taking away. It is your right. But no, let's sit there and become partisan, they call it, or, or political. Pol pol we all become politicians and we all take sides. It's like, it's like you know, two people in a ring trying boxers and then suddenly this one's there supporting this one and that one's there supporting that one. And, and we can't see what is wrong when, it's, when something is wrong. Look at the history of America and all the things the black people went through. If they did not stand up for their rights and fight when there was need for it, we would not be having the same America we're rushing to today. People, people died for it. People's blood went for it. That's the same country that we're all chasing. We all want to run down there. Slavery took place and people stood up against it. And what is affecting us right now in Africa is corruption. You can call it another form of slavery because it is economic slavery. Where a few people, if you see where they live, if you see the hotels they own, if you see the cars they drive, and then you see the ordinary citizens just suffering because when I go to Nigeria, I drop the high heel shoes, I drop the makeup, I am as plain as you can see, and I get on with everyone and I want to know what's going on. And I take whatever transportation everybody takes. And I see things for real. And people are struggling for real. But you see one human being take away $3 billion. And he walks away with it. And you see people celebrating him and telling you how great he is. There was one time I saw a report on... The, the various salaries of the, you know, politicians across the world. And of course, Nigerian politicians and more than even President Obama at the time. And they were fighting over how many cars the government should buy for them. But honor, you should see the buses the normal people use. It's completely right. There are no chairs in some of them. They have to get benches and put in it. Don't you even dream of air conditioner in the regular buses back, back, back in Nigeria? And then you see these politicians who claim that they are making laws on behalf of these people, asking for 15 cars to be parked in front of their house. And there are one human being who is sitting in one car at one time. So what is the point of the 15 cars? You can't count how many homes they own. And the homes are empty. And they only they're in residence maybe once in a month or once in six months in different parts of the world. So should we just continue to sit down and do nothing and watch this happen when this is the future of our children and generations to come? That's my question to you. And that's why I want you to wake up. If we all put our voice together and start talking and start making as much noise as possible. Maybe we, should, we could get into their, the greedy part of them that is not thinking that they're human, where the Bible clearly says that all these things we do on this earth. Bible. Ecclesiastes. I can't remember the exact, I'll find it. It says it's all vanity upon vanity, and it comes to nothing. We're all dust and we'll come back to dust. So what is the point taking $3 billion to stash away somewhere and then see your own people suffering and dying and turning young children into prostitutes while you, 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 you sit in one place with this $3 billion sitting and doing nothing? I don't get it. We need to wake up. The sooner we wake up, the better because our country needs us. Okay, so my message is, um, 
like I was saying earlier, lots of us like to hide on that lack. People will say to you, yes, yes, I could have gone home if, if this was there and that was there. Yes, we lack good roads. Yes, we lack electricity, which I, I, I struggled with for a period. But you know, what happens is you have to find a way to make something work. And just like the young man said in the Africa report, it's okay for all of us to hop into the plane and come to a place where somebody else has created all these things. And we don't want to deal with the hard work. What I'm trying to say is, there is room for growth back in Africa. There is room for all of us. And like Martin Luther King said, what is the point of you thinking you're living when you're actually dead? If all you're doing is to go and hang on to what somebody else has created and you don't think you should create something. And this is one of my saying, I always say to people, there is no point just living in the past or living history. Because yes, I love us to read about history, but what some of us do is we read history and we remain in history. My saying is, I like us to be history. Not just live history, but we should become history. We should create history. Because every one of these people that we've talked about, you know, look at somebody like Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook. 16 is when he started what he did. And then you have various people who have, we've talked about, go on, who ruled Nigeria 30, we've talked. So it's not about age. Any of us can become this person, Gandhi, and, um, uh, King, and you name them, it is in all of us. If we can allow our mind, like that book, Think and Grow, if we can allow our mind, everything we become starts from the mind. And it then goes wrong when we allow people to influence it. And that's when we're talking about being programmed or brainwashed, which I talk about all the time. This is what's going on with us. We've allowed our minds to be history. And so we remember that, oh yeah, our great-grandparents were slaves. And so, you know, you hear that saying, yeah, oh yeah, but, but what do you think? I, why, why should I think otherwise when this is all I know? I'm, I'm a good example of where somebody does not think what they, what they wear, what, what they grew up to know. Because my, my story is, is very clear. I, I talk about myself all the time. I started from zero. I started from local tiny little village and, and my dad had so many of us and, and you know, my dad never made it his particular business to tie all his effort on one person and so he gave all of us same opportunity, go to school, read and write, and once you can read and write, you move on. But I did not move on to become stupid. I've had to deal with so many um, complicated, challenging situations in life and I've pulled myself out of it. And I still deal with challenges. Because when I get on that plane and I say I'm going to Nigeria, I am going to Nigeria and I could stay for as long as I want to stay. And I take it from the very grassroots. I don't go there and say, oh yeah, you know what, and I, I want AC in the car, I, I drive around in and I want to live in an AC house. And yeah, all of that will come when I work hard to achieve it, which I will by God's grace. But it's not about you running away from something just because it hasn't been set. Because that's where we are. We want it to be perfect before we can go to it. We don't want to be the ones that make it. When I was with my friend in Nigeria, and it was very interesting. We went to the shop, and, um, and, and, and she was saying, do you notice what most Nigerian women do? I said, somehow I never notice. I, I just do what I want to do. I, I, barely, I barely dress up when I'm going out. I just wear the most basic outfit, and I'm out there doing what I have to do. And she said, watch them. When they see a woman coming, the first thing they do, they look, look at you from your feet up. Mm -hmm. Really, really? Feet from up? Why would they want to look at your feet up? Oh, because they are sizing you up. They want to see what shoes you're wearing. They want to see what handbag you're carrying. They want to see what dress you are these designer names. And, and yes, I know people are like that. Because I've had people who say to me that they will not go out without wearing a three three thousand dollar watch, wristwatch. 
You're so good at making sure you have only the best, but you're not good at creating this thing. And that's why the rest of the world will continue to look at us as the buyers. I mean, look at China. Everything that can be made, made is made in China. And yet we all hop on that plane and want to go to America because everywhere there looks, in our head, it looks amazing. And we don't think we can create our own New York in Nigeria or London in Nigeria or wherever in Nigeria. We cannot create that. It, th these same people use their brain to create what they become. They use their head, their mind. Because Think and Glory reminds you clearly that it starts with a thought. And it's a desire. And it comes down to you see what is happening and you become the solution to that problem. So in Nigeria we have so many problems. Yes, the problems are there waiting for someone to solve them. They're not there that people should run away from them. So that's where we are. While we're solving that problem, we could create things that will benefit our people. And that's where we need to be. So while I'm not a huge fan of picking on government and attacking government for you know not giving everything to everybody, I am also of the opinion that we really need to go there and create things for ourselves. I mean, where I have issues with the government is when they start to loot, when they start to take away things that belong to the people, when they have a little role to play, which is give them the basics, and they don't do it, and then they choose to take it all away and go and give to the same society that already has everything. You just go and put the money in a bank. You don't think you could have created maybe malls, you could have created roads, you could, you could name the road after yourself if that would make you happy. You could create schools, you could create hospitals. These same people when they're ill they get on the plane and they run off to abroad again. But they've taken three billion dollars for starters to go and put in America or wherever, but they don't think. They could have created the America in that country. They could have created a hospital that when they're ill, they go back to. They could have created the mall that they can go and do their shopping. They could have created good roads that we can drive in easily without causing accidents everywhere. You don't want to be there when the rainy season starts because already the roads are bad, so it gets worse. Because there are no proper, you know, I, I don't want to go into it. But these are problems that we can solve. And we can solve in so many ways by either, you know, physically being part of it or giving them enough grief so that they can do what they need to do. By not celebrating them. By reminding them that they have a role to play for the society. Because when you sit out there and you hail them, I actually saw in that BBC program where the, the people who were hailing this man were a huge crowd. This, this program on prostitution, when the, when, when the government investigated and they found out this husband and wife that are trafficking these young kids to various parts of the world, the people in the area were not standing for them. These are the questions we need to ask ourselves. Are we encouraging this change that we want? Or are we actually causing the problem? That's where we are. So the options are many, the options are many, and a country like Nigeria has so much to offer all of us, so much. It may not be easy, but it has to be done. It has to be done. I mean, look at these pillows that I made. These are simple pillow covers that I, I made, bringing it from Nigeria. What I've done, and these clothes, what I've done is I've ended up employing people and paying them money. So instead of these people sitting idle and saying they don't have a job, I brought them jobs. And that's exactly what is going on in countries like Bangladeshi and in India, where they get these contracts to make all these clothes that these shops in these Western worlds are selling. So if we put our act together and create amazing designs, we may be in a position to export these things. You never know, but you have to start from somewhere. So, beautiful, look at it. I've nicely packaged it. All I need now is maybe some images to go with it. And it's all been put in that in different colors. They are available for sale, by the way. So, it's for people to start using their head, 
to create the things we want. And that's the society I want us to create. A society that we can all put our hands together and make it better, not just for ourselves today, but for our children, so they have somewhere they can call home, so they have a place they can go to and get their own job without being worried about if it's because of the color of their skin or because of their height or because of the hair on their head or, you know, there's always that excuse everywhere else. Mom, I didn't get the job because I wasn't white or because I had Afro hair or because, or because, or because I didn't go to that university or that school. We want our children to be comfortable, to, to feel good in their own land. Because remember this story in the Bible when Joseph went to Egypt. When Joseph went to Egypt and had that dream and then Pharaoh employed him, he became the vice president or prime minister or whatever he was, everything was okay. But centuries later, what happened? Moses then came. What happened? The children of Israel were not made slaves. They were the ones doing all the dirty jobs in Egypt because obviously the Pharaoh that employed Joseph was no longer there. A new person had come like we're experiencing now with Trump. And so a new person had come and now he didn't want to hear about the history of how great these people were and supported the system. So now I want you to become the slaves. We don't want our children to become slaves. Slavery is past gone. And so they should have a country that they can say, historically, this is mine. That's the kind of Africa I want us to create. That's the kind of Nigeria I want us to have. And that's why I will keep at this storytelling until something changes. Because remember, every one of us, we all have something to do to create a better society. So thank you so much for listening to me to the end of this program. And I really, really want us to do things that we can do to help our society become better and our children and our, you know, generations unborn. Um, there's so many more that will be coming your way. I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will talk more about this. And um, stay blessed and God bless you always.